When a company decides to virtualize their environment, it's important to choose a hypervisor that provides a dynamic, solid foundation where the virtual machines will run. Windows Server 2008 R2 with Hyper-V provides this solid foundation at a very low cost of ownership. With the advances in this release of Windows Server, the foundation becomes a dynamic pool of resources that allow Woodgrove Bank to provide the services each application needs as that application needs them, which means that the quality of service they can provide to their business owners satisfies the requirement for the business. Now that the design for the virtual environment is complete, Woodgrove Bank needs to build the host Hyper-V servers. To do this, they will install Windows Server 2008 R2 on each of the three host servers. Here we will see the installation of one of those servers. Windows Server 2008 R2 builds on the award-winning foundation of Windows Server 2008, expanding existing technology and adding new features to enable Woodgrove Bank to increase the reliability and flexibility of their server infrastructures. Before installing Windows Server 2008 R2, Woodgrove Bank ensured that their new servers would run it properly and would also be able to run the Hyper-V server role. Hyper-V requires an x64 based processor, hardware assisted virtualization, and that hardware enforced data execution prevention or DEP must be available and enabled. With the proper hardware to fit Woodgrove Bank's needs, the installation can proceed. There are several operating system choices available during a server installation, including both a full and core option for each edition listed. Woodgrove Bank decided that a full installation of the Enterprise Edition would best suit their needs. Windows Server 2008 R2 Enterprise is an advanced server platform that provides more cost-effective and reliable support for mission-critical workloads. It offers innovative features for virtualization, power savings, and manageability and helps make it easier for mobile users to access company resources. The license terms must be accepted before proceeding with the installation. Because this is an installation on a new server that does not have an existing operating system, the custom installation is the best option. For this server, Windows will be installed on Disk 0 in a single partition. Woodgrove Bank could choose to create multiple partitions and even use another hard disk if one was available. If installing on a hard disk that's connected to a SCSI controller, then a driver would need to be loaded from the media provided by the controller's manufacturer. Now the installation begins. The setup files are copied and extracted and then installed on the server. This process will take several minutes to complete and the server will be rebooted. New virtualization tools, web resources, management enhancements, and exciting Windows 7 integration help save time, reduce costs, and provide a platform for a dynamic and efficiently managed data center. Powerful tools such as Internet Information Services or IIS version 7.5, Updated Server Manager and Hyper-V platforms and Windows PowerShell version 2.0 combine to give customers greater control, increased efficiency, and the ability to react to frontline business needs faster than ever before. Before logging on to the new Windows installation, a new password needs to be created for the local administrator account. Passwords must meet the complexity requirements and will be rejected if they're too simple. After the installation of Windows Server 2008 R2, and before deploying the new server in the enterprise, some configuration is required. To identify this server to other computing resources on Woodgrove Bank's network, secure the server, enable administrators to perform tasks on the computer, and customize the computer by adding server roles and features. These tasks can be completed using the commands in the Initial Configuration Tasks window, which opens immediately after the operating system installation is complete. First, networking will be configured. Network connections provide connectivity between this server and the internet, a network, or another computer. To set the network connections now, click Configure Networking. For this server, an IP address of 192.168.0.210 and a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 will be specified. 
An IP address of 192.168.0.1 will be specified for the default gateway. And for the preferred DNS server, the IP address of 192.168.0.1 will also be used. If this is the first time that Windows Server 2008 R2 is installed on this computer, the setup process assigns the computer a randomly generated number as a computer name. It is recommended that the computer name is meaningful to the role it performs and fits with the naming scheme for computers in Woodgrove Bank's organization. This computer will be the third Hyper-V server in the Seattle location, so it will have the name SEA-WSHV-03. Because the computer name was changed, the server needs to be rebooted before proceeding further. The last initial step to get this server ready to perform its role is to install the Hyper-V server role. With Hyper-V, the Microsoft hypervisor-based server virtualization technology, plus flexible licensing policies, it's now easier than ever to take advantage of the cost savings of virtualization through Windows Server 2008 R2. This enables you to make the best use of your server hardware investments by consolidating multiple server roles as separate virtual machines running on a single physical machine, and also efficiently run multiple different operating systems, including Windows, Linux, and others, in parallel on a single server and fully leverage the power of x64 computing. Installing the Hyper-V role on a full installation of Windows Server 2008 R2 installs all the components of the Hyper-V technology, including the remote management tools. The tools consist of Hyper-V Manager, which is a Microsoft Management Console snap-in, and Virtual Machine Connection, which provides you a console view to a virtual machine through a network connection. Virtual machines require virtual networks to communicate with other computers. It's recommended that you create at least one virtual network now for use with virtual machines. A list of network adapters detected on the host system is displayed, and an option is provided to select the devices for which virtual networks are to be created. Woodgrove Bank has decided to create virtual networks after the installation of Hyper-V. Now the Hyper-V role will be installed, and afterwards the wizard can be closed. The installation of the Hyper-V role requires a reboot of the server. Now that the Hyper-V role has been installed, the Hyper-V manager can be used to configure virtual networks and add virtual machines. In this demonstration, you've been able to see how easy it is using the familiar Windows Server interface to install, configure, and enable a physical server for virtualization. Next, Woodgrove Bank will configure Windows failover clustering to increase the availability of the hosted virtual machines.